Okay, so good day again, everyone. So our topic for today is about secure data management. So in this lesson, uh, you will learn about securing and backup data and secure distractions. Okay, so again. In offices and businesses, many devices, including PCs, laptops, and mobiles, may contain highly sensitive data pertaining to the company or may give access to the company network. If someone were to get hold of one of these devices, the results could be disastrous. So theft of company secrets, identity theft, and unauthorized access to the company network could occur. The same threats apply to your own personal PC, laptop, or mobile devices. So there, are a range, there, there is a range of measure you can take to enhance the physical security of your or your organization devices. Number one, as what we have here, do not leave unsecured computers or devices unattended. This will reduce the likelihood of them being stolen. So this particularly applies to easily stolen mobile devices such as laptops, smartphones, and tablets, which you may be using in a public environment. Number two, record details in location of items and equipment. So this one. For example, PCs, no? this allow for equipment to be tracked easily. Use cable locks no? to secure computers and devices safely, especially if members of the public have access to the work area. And in addition, work areas can be secured by using access control measures such as swipe cards or biometric scanning. This will prevent unauthorized individuals from accessing the workplace. So backup procedure, one way to avoid one way to avoid loss of important data is to regularly create backups of the data. So important data could be lost due to accidental or malicious deletion, power surges, disk corruptions, or physical damage from fires or flood. By regularly backuping important data, you can at least recover most, if not all of your data. It is important to have regular scheduled backups. Also, the backup data should be stored separately from the original data. And this will ensure that if, you're, if some form of physical disaster damages the original, the backups will be in the safe location. So let's say, for example, you have five branches. No? So there, uh, the backup of your uh, main will be, for example, in branch one. The backup of your branch one will be in the main. Or for example, branch two, three, four, five, the backup will be in the main uh, business uh, establishment. Then backup uh, of your main, for example, is in a branch one. No? Okay, so this is advisable. Now, again, schedule, that's what we have here. No? Whenever possible, schedule backups during off peak hours. So most commonly, the schedule is uh, 12 midnight. No? Okay? Uh, when system use is low, the backup process takes less time to complete. So you will need to carefully plan when to backup key system data. So let's say, for example, if you are working in a call center uh, or in Accenture, for, let's say, for example, no? and uh, the work is, for example, is uh, A6 to 2, uh, 2 to 10. Then, for example, uh, then again tomorrow the 6 to 2 and so on. So you need to schedule your backup time. Compression. Okay. So compressing data during backup helps reduce the size of files so that they can be stored using less memory than original file or files. So upon this decompression, the files will return to the original size. Again, the location. To ensure that backups are not lost in case of natural disasters, it is essential that copies of backups are stored off-site. So as I mentioned earlier, you will also need to include copies of all software you need to install to recover and restore system operations. Regularity. 
So how often you create backup depends on the value of the data and the frequency with which the data changes. So for example, if your data changes on a daily basis, a daily backup may be performed. Okay. So nowadays, there are many options for backup or backing up your content. So you do not need any sophisticated equipment. You can use CDs, DVDs, external hard drives, flash drives, network drives, or even online storage like Microsoft OneDrive. So it might be a good idea to back up your data to multiple places. For example, you may choose to back up your content onto both an external hard drive and to an online storage site. So to back up data, a location such as local drive, external drive, media, cloud services. So this will be the process. Now, after that, click the backup and restore button. Then click set up backup. Select backup location, drive network, and click next. Select the data to backup. Accept the recommended default setting, of course. Then save settings and click back up. So as you can see here, we have weekly or every Sunday or what will be the exact time. So we could be able to schedule actually. Now, in uh, another way, for example, uh, in Windows 7, click the start button. Actually, same with Windows 10. Click control panel. Click the back up and restore button. Click restore my files. Select the files or folders. Click next, choose to restore in the original location or in the following location to choose a new location and click store, restore rather. Now, this will be an important things also to consider. How to secure distraction. When you need to dispose of a storage device that contains important information, Appropriate steps must be taken to ensure that the data is permanently erased and cannot be recovered by unauthorized individuals. Depending on the type of media, such as magnetic media, such as USB or hard disk or optical media, such as CDs or DVDs, various steps have to be taken to ensure that no remaining data can be recovered. Data remanence is, is data that remains on media if, even after it has been permanently deleted. So when a user deletes a file, it is usually moved to the trash bin. So a user can empty the trash bin seemingly permanently deleting the file. However, the file is not actually deleted. Some remnants of the file remains on the disk until the space occupied by the file is overwritten with other data. So data remanence exposes people or organizations to the risk of identity theft or disclosure of sensitive information if storage media is not disclosed of properly. So the common methods of permanently destroying data, number one, of course, is shredding. Paper containing sensitive information should be shredded. No? Shredders are very cost effective. Specialized shredders can also be used to permanently destroy storage media, such as DVDs or hard drives, the ghosting. It is a process in which the magnetic field of a disk or drive is reduced or removed. This process uses a specialized device called the gausser. Now, when applied to magnetic media, the ghosting in, indiscriminately erases data required to control where data is written or read on the medium. Another, of course, is the drive or media destruction. So the best way to ensure the destruction of data and avoid data remanence, although it may be time consuming and quite cumbersome, is by physically destroying the data storage medium. So the methods used to destroy the storage media must be done in thorough manner as even a small fragment could contain a large amount of data. And of course, um, Specific destruction techniques include, of course, physical, uh, physically breaking the media, no? apart by grinding, shredding, and others. 
incineration, phase transition, of course, liquefactions or vaporization of solid disk, application of corrosive chemicals such as acid to recording surfaces. So, using data destruction utilities. Magnetic storage such as computer hard drives can be cleaned by software that uses an overwriting or wiping processes. So USB or flash drive device can also be cleaned in this way. So this is special software overrides all the usable storage location. And most secure file deletion software offers a choice of more and less secure overwriting options. So more secure options take more time given the multiple override operation. And there are few free public domains programs that perform secure overrides. So we have the divan and eraser. So such some online services such as social network sites, internet forums, blogs in cloud services may allow you to delete information, but that, must, uh, but that does not mean it has been permanently erased. There is ongoing debate regarding what companies and websites do with posted information, even after it has supposedly, uh, supposedly been deleted from public view. Remaining constantly vigilant when online will help minimize the threat of incriminating information being shared online. So, but know that even if you have deleted something from a social network site, or forum, it may not have completed been erased. And that's it. So thank you. And I think you have an idea now on how, of course, to secure destruction and securing and backupping your files. So thank you and good day, everyone.